so the way that I'd like to run the, the panel is that uh, I'll introduce individually each of our panelists and uh, ask them a question and have them uh, speak for a bit and then we'll have a conversation thereafter. Uh, so I want to start with uh, Amy Lemish, who is immediately on my left. Uh, and uh, so let me introduce Amy. Amy is Executive Director of the California Film Commission. Uh, she was appointed by Governor Schwarzenegger, a Republican, then reappointed by Governor Brown, a Democrat, so nonpartisan. <laughs> uh, and under her leadership, the commission coordinates with all levels of state and local government to promote California as a production locale. Uh, such efforts in turn create jobs, increase production spending, and generate tax revenues. So that's something we want to talk about. Ms. Lemich has also served as the state's leading advocate for educating legislators, uh, production industry decision makers, and the public at large about the value of filming in California. Uh, she was instrumental in creating the, uh, in the creation and passage of the California Film and uh, Television Tax Credit Program enacted in 2009, I guess just recently uh, reenacted or, or re-upped. Uh, she has 15 years of, uh, of experience as a producer for Penny Marshall's company, Parkway Productions, uh, and uh, while there uh, has to her credits um, a producer of independent films like with friends like these, Riding in Cars with Boys, which I saw and liked very much, uh, The Preacher's Wife, Renaissance Man, Awakenings, uh, A League of Their Own, Calendar Girl, and the list goes on and on, but uh, I'd like to get to the, to the uh, topic that we want to talk about. So we, uh, you've been really involved in, uh, in film and television tax credits, and we heard, uh, so I'd like you to explain uh, kind of what that's all about and how that contributes to keeping production in Los Angeles, but also kind of a little more of the broader question that Peter brought up of, it's not just the filming, but this is really a dynamic industry, and, mm -hmm. and, and how do we keep this industry competitive you know, with our subsidies sort of focused so far on film and television production? Right, it, it is a very uh, subsidy-focused industry right now. Um, when I started at the Film Commission about 10 years ago, it was uh, right in the height of the trajectory of all these, uh, the growth of these tax credit programs in the U.S. and worldwide. And so, you know, our goal always is to increase production, which is going to increase jobs here and support small businesses, and that's the whole goal of the California Film Commission. We're under the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development. We are seen as an economic development department. We want to try and make sure California is a business-friendly, we say film-friendly environment for filming. We do a lot of problem-solving uh, to try to, for, for those productions that do want to shoot here, to give them you know, sort of smooth operating. If they want access to a location, they're having difficulty, they'll call us to help smooth things out, cut red tape, deal with government bureaucracy. But we can do all of that at, at the best we possibly can. But it, you know, we it evolved into the situation where, like Peter was saying, it's a business decision. If I'm going to save 30 percent by going to Vancouver, crazy. I, I would too. Every, you, you know, you have a certain budget. You have to deliver a product, whether that's a movie or a TV series, and it's a business, and you have to hit your numbers, and you you do what you have to do. So. We finally, uh, the legislature did pass legislation back in 2009, which really helped a lot. I mean, uh, our program has been enormously successful and oversubscribed. You've probably heard all about that because we have a, we probably get more interest in filming here than anywhere in the world. Producers will still tell you this is their first choice. I hear it all the time. This is where they would prefer to film. We have a lot of benefits, but again, they're weighing the budget with all those benefits and maybe going to another place that doesn't have the same benefits. I mean, we have the crews, we have the infrastructure, we have the studio facilities, we have every piece of equipment, you need it, we've got it, and we have the weather, right? People shoot outside 365 days a year, we've got all that, but despite all those um, benefits that we have here, we have to be able to compete financially with all these other places. So we'll, I'm sure we're gonna get into the whole tax credit situation, but yes, we had, I administer the program for the state. So uh, I'm actually going to skip around 
a, a, a little here and go to uh, Eric Schwarzel. Eric is, uh, covers the film industry for the Wall Street uh, Journal in Los Angeles, where he focuses on corporate news in Hollywood. He's extensively covered runaway production and incentive developments across the country, which is why I'm skipping around after <laughs> your uh, uh, really informative introduction. Uh, he also uh, does investigative reporting. Prior to joining the journal in 2013, uh, Mr. Swarzel worked as a reporter and editor at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, and his coverage there of natural gas drilling in the uh, Appalachian region won the Scripps Howard Award for Environmental Reporting and the Sydney Award for Socially Conscious Journalism. Uh, and in 2013, he was named editor and publishers mag named to the editor and publishers magazine list of 25 under 35, a collection of young leaders in journalism, and I believe is a graduate of Boston University. That's yes. right. Yeah, that wasn't even in the notes. Good job. Yeah. Thank and, you. Um, <laughs> uh, but so, so uh, Eric, what are the other states doing that you've covered? And, and at least in the little that I know of it, uh, some states are starting to back off of this uh, as a way of using tax dollars and. How is California doing relative to other states? What's kind of the landscape there? Yeah, it can be hard to place California um, in comparison to other states because each state really approaches it so differently and the um, political winds are so different in so many states. Um, one of the first trips I took whenever I um, took on this new job at the Journal was to Atlanta. Um, a state that is so enthusiastic about film production there that they've taken to calling themselves Yollywood. And um, I met with a lot of people, below the line workers, production assistants, and makeup artists who were moving there from Los Angeles because it was less competitive and obviously, you know, cheaper, um, cheaper place to live. Um, and it was drawing some, some workers there. Um, there's been quite a bit of political stability for the credit there. It's a 30% credit um, if you, you know, do, every, do all, the, all of the requirements. Um, and the political stability is really driving a lot of um, development. Their um, Pinewood Studios, which is this massive soundstage company based in England that um, you know is the soundstage for Star Wars and James Bond, they opened their first US site in Atlanta most recent, um, you know, I think it was last year. Um, and Marvel Studios is filming Ant-Man there right now. Um, you also saw a very interesting development earlier this year where the governor of Georgia um, announced that they were going to start a Georgia Film Academy which was a state-run Votech type program um, for worker training. So you can see they're really trying to set this up for you know, being in, in the long haul. Um, whereas you have a state like North Carolina, um, which had a very robust program for a long time. Um, movies like Iron Man 3 were filmed there. Um, earlier this year, or late last year, um, all but eliminated their program after legislators there said, you know, why are we giving money to Hollywood when we're not giving money to manufacturing and so on? Um, and you sort of almost overnight saw what was an incredibly robust program, you know, be all but, all but eliminated. And I was doing some research um, ahead of the panel and I saw that there actually are a handful of pretty significant programs right now that are facing some political pressure in their states. Florida is one. Uh, Massachusetts, which has a pretty significant program. The governor there, the new governor, has expressed skepticism about it. Um, there was, and in Maryland as well. Um, and the issue there is that as producers try and plan productions years in advance, even the specter of political opposition to these programs can be enough to you know, drive, them, drive them out of the state. Um, one producer I spoke with told me this great story about how in 2010, um, when the then new governor of Pennsylvania, Tom Corbett, was being inaugurated, he watched the inauguration speech on his television. And uh, he ha was on the phone with his business partner the entire time, waiting to see what the governor said in the inauguration speech about tax credits to know where they should book their flight to go start pre-production. Great, that's it. Uh, so now I want to turn to uh, Ken Ziffrin. Uh, Ken is co-founder and partner of Ziffrin uh, Brittenham uh, and partner of Ziffrin and Ziffrin. Uh, he is a transactional attorney uh, with representative transactions, including neutral mediator uh, in resolving the WGA AMPTP strike, uh, counsel to NFL in negotiating network contracts, counsel to Microsoft in forming MSNBC, uh, negotiated for DirecTV with studios on domestic and 
international pay-per-view agreements, and that list just goes on and on and on. Uh, very successful negotiator and transactional lawyer, also a lecturer and writer on entertainment law, and a professor at UCLA School of Law teaching seminar courses in network television, motion picture distribution, uh, and does an annual presentation to the Beverly Hills Bar Association. And if that's not enough, uh, senior advisor to LA Mayor's Office of Motion Pictures and Television Production, and a member of the advisory board and uh, campaign cabinet for UCLA School of Law board member of uh, public council. He received his bachelor's degree from Northwestern, he is a UCLA law graduate, uh, order of the Coif editor-in-chief uh, of the UCLA Law Review and clerk to Chief Justice Earl Warren. Uh, so Ken, uh, you have long experience in this industry and you've heard about these uh, subsidies and heard Peter. How can uh, California engage public and private partnerships to uh, really kind of grow this industry uh, in some of the ways that Peter was talking about and to keep uh, to, to keep the industry vibrant and, and, um, and, and competitive? Well, <clears throat> I think that the legislation that was passed last year uh, was a sea change largely in attitude because based on the data that was accumulated over the five years or four years then existent, what we, that is, those of us who are in favor of the legislation, what we were able to show was that, by and large, the tax credits are, in effect, cost justified, if I can put it that way. Uh, a number of studies were published to the effect that the uh, state and cities picked up a dollar and 11 cents for every dollar of tax credit. And that was a resounding message to the state legislature and to the governor's office. And we kind of used that uh, ammunition in making this happen. So rather than what you'll find in other states and uh, he's correct in pointing out that in many other states uh, there's a decline. I think the reason there's a decline is that there is no infrastructure in those states. They do this on a one-off basis and as a result they aren't building the kind of infrastructure. Now Atlanta may be an exception to that. Certainly New York is an exception to that. But we think no one is, quote, as good as we are, at least in terms of getting, uh, getting things done and getting them efficiently. One of the arguments that I like to make to studio heads who are deciding on where to shoot uh, is you may be missing the other notion, which is even if you don't get as much tax credits as you can get elsewhere, the work here can be done faster <clears throat> with quality and, if you will, under your control. Whereas if you're shooting in Timbuktu, obviously you may save money, but you may not save time and it may not get done in quite the same way. So our task right now in terms of uh, the mayor's office is to communicate this message which we call green light Hollywood uh, to the trade and we will be visiting the studios the agencies management companies and the like to fill them in on what's going on and how the city is trying to improve its servicing uh, of the industry Great, and, uh, it, 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 and you brought us some ideas I want to come back to, but uh, our uh, last panelist is uh, Bruce During, last but not least, certainly, uh, and, and Bruce has a, a really interesting uh, resume. He's executive director of the International Cinematographers Guild. Uh, he was born and raised in Montana, 
uh, received his BA in political science from Stanford University and is also a UCLA law uh, graduate. Uh, in the years between 1971 and 1984, he worked as a labor organizer in San Francisco and a steel worker in Chicago. And in November 85, he joined the staff of IATSC Local 659, the West Coast Cinematographers Guild in 1996, when the guild merged with New York and Chicago uh, locals, uh, he became its national executive director, has served on the board of directors of the Motion Picture Pension and Health Plan since 1986, also a member of Los Angeles Labor Federation's Committee of Political Education and serves on the board of Film LA. Uh, so uh, Bruce, you know, one of the arguments that I heard uh, uh, at a hearing in Sacramento about why the state should be really involved in the entertainment industry is that guilds like yours have many members who have very good middle class jobs. We think of the entertainment industry as movie stars, but, uh, but in fact there are lots of really good middle class jobs. This is an industry in transformation and we heard uh, uh, Peter and his excitement about where it's going. Uh, you know, from the guild's point of view, uh, how are the guilds kind of uh, a changing to adapt to this uh, brave new world, if you will, and, and, and be you know trying to create that critical mass, uh, uh, that agglomeration that doesn't fly away from uh, Southern California? Now, well, first, let me just underscore the middle class jobs. Um, sure. As far as uh, Mr. Yu said in his uh, study said that the average wage in the entertainment industry is $24. Um, for an IATSC member uh, working in the state of California, the average wage is somewhere between $35 and $40 an hour. Uh, in addition to that, we have a terrific health plan, a, a good pension plan, and <clears throat> all of the um, attributes of a middle class lifestyle. And so what this legislation has done is basically say, okay, stop. The 48% critical mass that Los Angeles has is not going to decline anymore. And I'm not going to be in the, we have a national guild. We support incentives across the country. Having said that, what we saw, and I speak, the IATSC, 1,500 members in Los Angeles moved to other film locations between 2010 and 2013. That's what was going on. So what's happened, you know, how do we see this kind of evolving in, with the passage of incentives? The other thing that will happen is they'll be able to work on better jobs. It won't be like it was in 12, 000, 2012 and 13, where of the 45 big budget movies, one was shot in Los Angeles. They, they were, we did a study in 2013, and we found that the work in Los Angeles, of the work that was being done in features, more than 50% was being done under the low budget agreement, and of those, 60% was being done under the lowest tier of the low budget agreement. In addition to that, as far as television was concerned, you know, after when features started to flee, Los Angeles became a television capital. Between 2005 and 2013, the critical mass went from 64% one hours to 28%. Mm -hmm. And so our members were suffering. They were not working the good job. So I think. That's what we've done, kind of set the foundation for the future. And as far as the growth and some of the figures that were said, I mean, what, what's happened is our guild has grown a, a lot across the country, but we've stagnated in Los Angeles, so I think we can move ahead. In terms of the challenges that Peter Guber is talking about, I, I think, as he indicated, it's still about visual storytelling. You know, digital technology is, there's no question, it's a paradigmatic, uh, a paradigm shift, and we're all adjusting to it now. Now, how are we adjusting to it? Well, if you look at gravity, and you look at the cinematographer on that particular production, which all kinds of green screen work, but it was really his lighting that produced the Academy Award. It was the lighting panels and the spinning of the light that made the characters look like they were in outer space. And he did that not with just the camera crew, he did that with the electric crew, he did it with the, with the grip crew, he did it with, with the whole crew. And, and yes, there's a lot of visual effects in that, but still, it gets down to the basic talents. 
you know, how do you select the composition, speaking from a cinematographer? How does he manipulate light and shadow? And how well does he collaborate with the rest of the crew? I think that's kind of what we see as the future. And by the way, this year he did Birdman, but, and, and it was, that was a single take picture and all, you know, kind of going back to basics. But what did he do? Speaking of jobs, one of the jobs we picked up in, uh, uh, with digital technology in our first digital agreement, the IA's first digital agreement, was a digital imaging technician. The cinematographer on Birdman will tell you the color, the contrast was absolutely critical to the look of that movie. And not to mention the Steadicam operator was basically, you know, <coughs> trying to you know, follow the uh, 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 Keaton down, down uh, the streets oh, of New York and, and backing up at about 10 miles an hour, right? So, I mean, it's a collaborative industry. That's not going to change. What goes on between the director, the cinematographer, the editor, and the pr production designer, all the department heads, I think is, is going to continue because those talents are necessary. Now, what are the guilds doing? I'll give you an example. Each year, we budget $260,000 for training. Um, and, that's, and that's in terms of data handling. That's what we call mega digital summits, where all the new cameras are there and the new workflows are explored. In addition, our cinematographers and first assistants are developing some of the new technology with the manufacturers. So we're right, I think, on the ground floor, doing as, as much as we can. I, I, we're, we're not keep, keeping up with Peter Goober's speed of light, but the fact is, you know, we're doing the work. And, and, I, and I think we'll continue to do it, and the incentives give us that opportunity. So, so uh, now I'd like to come back to uh, something that Ken said about infrastructure. Yes. And, and that infrastructure that we have here has been key. Uh, and, and of course, that infrastructure is changing. So uh, just kind of opening it up for a discussion of you know, what infrastructure do we need that we don't have? How do we deepen that? And uh, you know, what role does this uh, private industry play, what policies might be good policies to really kind of deepen that and improve that part of the uh, competitive picture. Uh, and that's for anyone who wants to jump in. Go ahead. Well, I think, you know, what's, what's interesting to see about the development in Georgia, as you said, I mean, Georgia is probably one of the few states with a uh, relatively new uh, film industry that's really building a lot of infrastructure and not repurposing existing yes. infrastructure. Um, and you're right, that's probably going to be one of the, one of the few ones. What's interesting is to see um, some of the international territories that are really trying to encourage film production. They often have um, quite significant government backing. Um, I'm thinking of places like the Dominican Republic or Malaysia, um, places where you might not have like a bevy of new productions, but the ones that will be there um, really are coming in knowing that they have a ton of support from the political parties in power. Um, so I don't know what that means in terms of subsidizing, you know, production spaces there. You know, Pinewood, the studio, the, uh, the soundstage company that I mentioned earlier, a very interesting business strategy has emerged for them because of the incentives. They have um, new builds now in places where incentives are locked in. They have a space in the Dominican Republic. They have a space in Toronto. Now, when they go in, I mean, uh, the Dominican Republic is the best example of this. They went in and started talking about building a soundstage there while the film tax credit was being negotiated by the political parties. Um, so you can see there that kind of sort of tandem support that <coughs> California might be competing with. But, but like I said, we're also talking about really a David and Goliath situation here when it comes to how much infrastructure California has versus how much you know, the, the Dominican Republic might eventually have. Right, another piece of that is that we just, last week, um, we attended the Association of Film Commissions International Trade Show, which they do in LA every year. And film commissions from around the world come to LA because they're trying to get LA's business to leave. Um, but they will actually be the first to tell you, you know, they, they're, they're, there is a ca capacity limit at, at a lot of these places. So I have never had a phone call in 10 years that said, we're completely maxed out, there's no stage available, or I can't get a techno crane, or it, that, it hasn't happened. I mean, we'll see, and I think if we get to that point with the increase in production that we're anticipating, 
fine, someone's going to come along and build another stage facility, but we have the capacity to handle more than anywhere in the world high level production. London, last year I had heard that it was common knowledge they were maxed out. They, every stage was full. So productions, if it was a big level, you know, big tent pole kind of production, they could no longer handle one other project. They had to look elsewhere. So you'll see that in other places where, th th yes, they're looking at other locations like Louisiana or Shreveport or Atlanta, and they're looking at not just the physical infrastructure, but the human capital, you know, the, the crew levels. Who's going to be available? Who can I hire if I go there? And they're really busy, and they have 12 TV series shooting in Atlanta. Am I going to be able to hire a crew there? That's another big, um, I guess, obstacle for them, better for us, because we always have a very, very large crew base. So do we need to have uh, more educational programs in the community colleges or the Cal States here to develop an even larger workforce to improve that? Uh, infrastructure is this physical in infrastructure that uh, that you think we need? I think it's more manpower than it is physical. At least, I I agree with what Amy said about there being, <coughs> excuse me, sufficient facilities uh, to to handle most anything. In terms of training, this there are a number of schools here, both charitable and otherwise, that are kind of trying to stimulate especially disadvantaged kids to see if they can get in the trades. And with the unions involved, uh, that's again a really great public-private effort uh, that's being made. Um, there's one thing I should mention on that point, which is the new legislation <coughs> that passed, the, the, yes. that program's going to launch in July. There's a component of that, there's a requirement now yeah. that every production of every film or TV series that gets into the, our program, they must participate in a, um, a partnership with the you know, Department of Ed or the community college. Economic workforce. To, yes, to develop, to, to mm -hmm. job exposure, to work with the, the existing programs, arts, media, entertainment programs that are all out there to kind of be a, a, a pipeline so that they can gain experience. In Bruce? Well, I, I think it offers us an opportunity to diversify um, our membership as well. Uh, I mean, I, I think that if the incentive kicks in like we hope it will, there are programs uh, such as Hollywood CPR, uh, which has been, or it's taught, those programs are taught, the different crafts are taught by <laughs> IATSE members, whether they be in hair and makeup, camera, editorial, and so forth. And what it does, it's a community union partnership that draws from the communities that heretofore have been excluded from the, in, from the industry. And, and, I, and I think that's an important outreach, and we know that legislators were very interested in that um, during the process of, of, of our lobbying process. And, it, and, and, and I hope, I'd like to see that as, a, as something we should really uh, engage in. Okay. Um. So now I want to turn to a, kind of a different sort of question because of uh, uh, something that I heard the other day which was um, related to New Jersey subsidies. Uh, Governor Chris mm -hmm. Christie, maybe soon to be presidential candidate Chris Christie, uh, uh, vetoed the yes. subsidies uh, and, and the rationale that he gave was not that he was a fiscal conservative, uh, which he says he is, but rather because Jersey Shore portrayed the state of New Jersey in an unfavorable light. Uh, and, and, and so, the, you know, in thinking about this, where are there lots of subsidies coming from? Well, it's Louisiana, it's Georgia, Florida, Texas. These are states that are red states, fairly conservative. Is there sort of a long run pattern where uh, creative people in the film industry are thinking about? Uh, so this implicit, do we really want the government as our partner in that it's going to at least implicitly affect content, or is this really a red herring? Once the government starts reading scripts, <laughs> <laughs> which they do in Texas, and which they do in China, mm -hmm. um, that's the beginning of the end of the cultural movement. Uh, 
I got a wonderful call, although very sad, from a studio who is producing a picture called La La Land. And he said, I'm number 343 on the list. And I said, there's nothing I can do about it. Now, they really want to shoot here, but they can't because, in effect, under the old rules, they <coughs> drew a bad ball <laughs> on, on, a, on the lottery. But uh, we here in California, I, I think, because of our devotion to the industry, uh, would really laugh at Governor Christie and anyone else who, you know, took this seriously. I, and we can look at Argo as a wonderful example there, that mm -hmm. Argo really does make fun of our business, won Academy Award and was part of the, right. and was part of the uh, system. I, I, I know of only one state that actually has Texas, Texas. As a, in their tax credit law, something yep. about that they're not going to uh, give a tax credit to a project that portrays Texas in a disparaging manner, so, something to that effect. Um, but that's the only place, I think, outside of China, maybe, that does it. We, oh. California values, you know, First Amendment, and, and we don't do that. And the other thing is, it's, well, yeah, it's a creative process, but you also, a lot, most of the time, you're shooting a place not for that place. Argo is, was Iran, which we shot, they did a lot of that in Van Nuys. Right. So you're, it's movie magic, it's, you're, it's not real. And I, I don't think we're going to make a comparison. <laughs> well, no, but it's, no, but I forgive mean, me, it's show and it's biz. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, so I think we have time for one last question. Um, w so what I'd like to ask is, you know, we saw William's numbers. This is an industry that for a decade, in terms of employment growth, has been pretty stagnant. Yes. Uh, and, and so uh, <coughs> why don't you share with us your okay. thoughts about why that might not be the case in the next decade, oh. or, or will it be the case in the next decade that we're just doing a holding mm -hmm. action here in, in LA with an industry oh. that's not gonna be so much an engine of growth? I think if you, look at the constituent parts of the business, <clears throat> you get a different look. So there's no doubt that over the last X years, whenever you want to start, feature production has gone down and will continue, I believe, to go down, although not precipitously. But the way that the movie business now works is you produce pictures for under 20 million or over 80 million. And in between are basically your Oscar winning pictures. But those generally are not financed by the studios. They're financed by either wealthy, um, wealthy people who want to be in the business or hedge funds or things of that nature. On the other hand, Television has exploded and will continue to explode. We didn't have what we now call SVOD, subscription video on demand, 10 years ago. We didn't have a lot of the cable production, original cable production, that didn't start up till maybe six years ago. And we do have the network production. And now all three of those are eligible in California, where previously just cable was eligible. So I know Amy and I are hoping that we'll get a bunch of applications for over-the-air network, that is the big four, uh, in, the, in the May round. And for a change, we'll have our shows that are actually being produced here. So I think just saying the industry is flat ignores that there are constituent parts to it and they go in different directions. And Eric, do you have thoughts on that? Yeah, and I think we also can't underestimate the growth in uh, digital content that is certainly um, fueling some employment here in Los Angeles. 
Um, I also, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens to things like post-production in Los Angeles um, when the new program is, is implemented. With The new program has an additional sort of uh, incentive or boost for, for post-production services, many of which are sort of lured out of the state by separate um, credit programs to places you know, like Canada. Um, visual effects. Yeah, so visual effects, editing, thank you, yeah. So I think that um, that's another sector that I think we might be underestimating in terms of, you know, room to, room to grow. And music and music scoring also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, so I think that we are uh, just about out of time. Uh, I wanna thank each of you for uh, joining us and sharing your thoughts. I know we could go on for a long time. So please uh, join me in thanking our panel. Thank